Today I'm going to show you how I built this pizza dough rolling board with inlaid dough sizing gauge without the benefit of a CNC. About a month ago I found an amazing recipe for a homemade cast iron skillet pizza and started making my own dough. My regular cutting board wasn't large enough to roll it out on and I didn't like the idea of using the countertop so I decided I needed to make a dough rolling board. I'd roll the dough out to what I thought was about the right size but when I'd put it in the skillet it would invariably be a little too small and I'd have to take it out, roll it bigger and try again. Hey, I'm a woodworker, not a chef. So then I thought what I should do is inlay a ring in the dough board that was the perfect size for the skillet. So all I would have to do is roll the dough out to the size of the ring and it would be perfect the first time. I wanted the grain in the ring to run the same direction as the grain in the board, so I decided to glue up a small panel out of some maple offcuts I had from my last cutting board build and cut a circle out of that. The easiest way to do this would be with a CNC, but since I don't have one, I decided the next easiest thing to do would be to make a router trammel out of some scrap. I found a piece of hardboard and attached it to the router in place of the stock base plate. I drilled a hole 5.5 inches from the outside edge of the router bit, which is a 1 quarter inch white side spiral bit, to give me an 11 inch OD circle. Then I drilled a hole in another piece and super glued a six penny nail in it to use as a pivot point. I used the painter's tape and CA glue trick to attach the pivot point so I wouldn't have to drill a hole in the board. I set the router to an arbitrary depth that was something less than the thickness of the maple panel. I should have made it a little bit deeper and you'll see why in a minute. I was a little worried that something would move and I'd end up with a spiral instead of a circle, but it worked flawlessly. You can't tell where the cut started or ended. When you're done, you simply pry off the pivot point and remove all of the tape, and there's no damage left behind to the board. After that, I attached it to the maple panel the same way. I drilled another hole in the trammel one quarter inch farther from the router than the first one to establish the outer diameter of the ring. I didn't set it quite deep enough the first time and had to make a second pass.
I was worried that the ring might move into the bit and get gouged after it separated, so I used the tape trick one more time to make sure both pieces would be held in place after separation. Then I drilled a third hole one quarter inch closer to the router than the first, one half inch closer than the second, to establish the inner diameter. This of course gave me a one quarter inch wide ring. After the cut is finished, all there is left to do is very gently remove the ring from the tape. I'll save the maple circle for use in some future project. My precious. To make the ring seat easier, I sanded a slight chamfer on the bottom side. Remember earlier when I said I should have cut the groove deeper? In a couple of places, the chamfer went too high up the side of the ring, resulting in slightly thick glue lines. That wouldn't have happened if the groove was deeper, allowing the thicker top of the ring to contact all the way around. Daddy? What's up, baby? What are you doing? I'm working. Whoa, that's good. Can yeah. I come around? Yeah, still run that side right now. Okay. I'll show you this in a minute. Ah. Uh, all that glue. Oh boy, that's Babu yes. Yes. I never in my whole life. Never seen anything like it in your whole life. I know. I'm kind of as surprised as you are, to be totally honest about it. You want to do it now? I'll help over here. All right, you tighten that one up, Mom. This one? Mm-hmm. This way? Other way. Oh. Like that. There you go. Got it? Yes. It's good job. all tight. Good job. You're a good helper. Thank you. You're welcome. Get it just a little tighter. She did a good job. <sighs> Thank you. You're welcome. I didn't want to run it through the planer and risk blowing out the back of the ring, and for some reason I thought my flush trim saw would make fairly quick work of removing the excess maple. One eternity later. I was wrong.
I decided to break out my Wood River number four and see if that would do any better. It did, and to be honest, making shavings was actually a nice calming experience after trying to use that saw. I should have used this in the first place, because I was done less than five minutes later. After a little sanding, I gave the ends a quick trim to size. Since the board is too thin to put handles on the side, I put a 45 degree chamfer on the underside so I'd have a continuous finger hold all the way around. I mixed up a little 5 minute epoxy to fill a couple small knots and gaps. I added a 1 8 inch round over to the top side and sanded everything to 220 grit. Then, it's time for my favorite part. Oh, sorry. I hope you enjoyed that build as much as I'm going to enjoy making some pizza on it. Uh, it isn't perfect, uh, but I think it's going to suit my needs just fine, even though I made a few mistakes. You know, over and over again I say, we don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. <laughs> You're right, Bob. You're right. All right, if you did like it, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and we'll catch you on the next build. Take care.